Hello internet friends, it's been a while since I've done one of these collecting update videos and I like to do them occasionally, but a lot has happened since I last did one, which must be over 18 months ago now, not least of which is a complete change of circumstance. I'm not in the same house. Uh, this is the new room where I do all of my filming and also doubles as my collecting room. Uh, and it's there are pros and cons to it. The house is much more what we want and uh, a, a nicer place to live, but it hasn't afforded me the holy grail that I've been looking for all these years, which is, of course, a room where I can display my collection. And it's just dedicated to a collection room. But I can't complain. I've got this room all to myself. My wife being very kind and saying, look, that's your room. You can do whatever you want in there. And then when you're done, come, come, come and see me, uh, which is uh, kind of what I've always liked. And uh, and we we it suits us. Uh, so, yeah, it's uh, it's cool. A lot has happened with the channel as well. A uh, lot more people have joined and I feel a little bit more kind of straight with what I'm doing with it now. It has become a little bit of a Transformers channel, which is cool. It's not the way it kind of started, but uh, it, the videos that people tended to be watching were Transformers. So a lot of these videos early on, I was covering these other things, other toy lines up there, uh, which I do plan to do a little bit, but I've talked before about how when you're collecting in carded like this, a carded collection, and things in boxes, as you can see up there, I've got some various 80s toy lines in boxes. There's not much to talk about, really. I uh, So I'm, I'm still trying to puzzle YouTube out. YouTube's always a puzzle. I'm constantly posting videos thinking, oh yeah, the, there's loads of Transformers fans watching. They'll like this top 10 of something or other, and then no one watches. You think, okay, so what am I getting wrong there? Are they... I've misunderstood my audience. Who knows? It's very difficult to know on YouTube. But yeah, we're going to have a look at the collection where I'm up to with it. Of course, with most of you being Transformers fans, we'll start with the Transformers first. I did have cabinets, some nice display cabinets in my old house, which I have had to get rid of because they don't really fit in this. This, this property is like, um, it's not really old. But it is maybe a hundred plus years old. And at one time it was a single story and they've added a second story to it. So uh, the the floors are not very even. I mean, I could show you a shot of the floor, but I don't think you want to see that. Uh, so cabinets and things, it's a bit dicey, particularly for collections and things are going to be wobbling. There's floorboards under the carpets that are not even. It's, it's a little bit of a ramshackle, oldie worldy property. So they're not ideal. And, and the way I've got things set up, I'll just, you know, for the like the, the computer and where I do some filming, uh, kind of there's not a lot of space left. That's really weird in there. That's where all the internet is. That's the whole of the internet in there. Check this out. Can you see in there? There's internet. There's internet in there. Anyway, isn't that weird? Like like this old property that's got a weird sort of cabinet with a <laughs> just a bit of slate on top of it. Well, that's where your phone stuff goes. Of course it does. <laughs> um, yeah, so what we're going to do for the rest of this video, let's look at Transformers first. I'll satiate the desires of the Transformers fans on the channel, see what I've got so far. It's not a huge, still not a huge collection, but it's a massive, like, progression from where I was at the start. Look at some of those old videos for a kind of a, a sense of where I started. I had like, I got like five things and that it, that's what it was for about a month or so. Uh, a few months. Uh, yeah. So Transformers first. So when I ditched those display cabinet shelves 
I had to think when I came in here, what am I going to do with this wall? And I know I could be a little bit more economical here. There are only three shelves, very basic, three shelves, sturdy shelves, but I could fit more transformers. I'm already aware of that and already thinking, how can I maximize this space? It's all about walls, right? If you've not got a lot of floor space, it's all about walls. So this is where I'm going for now. But as you can see, the main, uh, the Autobot cars like G1 cars are starting to get to the edge of this shelf already. But I have been faithfully picking up versions of characters from all of G1. The most late, the, one of the latest ones here is of course Bumblebee, who's just come out for Studio Series 86. I get confused actually whether they come in the Legacy or the Studio Series 86, but there's a mix here. And some of these first came out, some of these are War for Cybertron. He's not come out in the Legacy yet uh, or Studio Series. This is Kingdom uh, Smokescreen, but I, you know, how would you improve that for a Legacy or Studio Series? Don't think you could. And I don't know if he'll come in the Studio Series because he wasn't in the movie. I'm picking up pipes. I don't know if that video of me unboxing pipes will have come out yet. Uh, this is the later version of Jazz and Jazz is being re-released again. But obviously the focus for a lot of G1 collectors, and I see a lot of people doing this, is they want a run of like season one cars and then uh, they do the later ones like Beachcomber came in season two, Grapple came in season two, but you've also got the OG guys like Blue Streak, Sunstreaker. He's what he's the one that came in the five pack, the Generations five pack. Because I never picked him up for War for Cybertron. We've got Ironhide, Trailbreaker, Ratchet. There are holes. There's like where's Hoist? Need to get hold of Hoist. Our uh, where's Sunstreaker's brother? He's still the only way I know how to get a modern version of Sunstreet. As, um, oh God, Sideswipe is in a two pack with, I think it's a, a Beast Wars guy it's called Screech or something. I do like this version of Wheeljack. And I'm kind of half thinking that I don't want to, de I, I could pick up those characters now, you know, wait for them to cut on discount. That A lot of them are, uh, well priced at the minute you could pick them up but then what they're doing increasingly is re-releasing a lot of these characters with slight paint deco upgrades and as they did with the generations uh, five pack release where we got hound for the first time in this kind of cartoony style they released five and i was very lucky because the only one that i already had was jazz i had uh, he's 01 in Studio Series, and I have, I've got that 01 Jazz. This is the Generations Jazz. So, the, uh, but fortunately for me, I did not have Trailbreaker, I didn't have Sunstreaker, I didn't have Wheeljack. So that Generations release was great for me, but only because I'm a little bit behind. I'm a little bit of a newer collector, because the advent... Uh, uh, the more ardent collectors or just people who've been in it for longer have picked those characters up already. So I don't want to necessarily do that too soon because I'm like, I need to complete this line now. No, I don't. I can wait and be patient and see if they do another one of those five packs. Anyway, I do like Inferno. Uh, you know, completely contradicting myself straight away. I really like the Inferno and Grapple that came round in uh, came out in Earthrise or Kingdom. So I've picked those guys up. Right, so that, oh, and I'll show you in a bit. There is somebody, somebody over here that will make that. I, I, I know it's not great here because how do I set up the lights? It's dark on this side. Anyway, never mind. But look over here. Somebody down in this corner who would make that original run complete. But I, I've not unboxed him yet. I'm not even sure what I'm doing with Prime. It's Prime. <laughs> um, Studio Series Prime. 
Okay, and we got the auto, we got the Dinobots. We completed the Dinobots, which was one of the draws for Studio Series 86 for me and one of the reasons I got in. This is great. You're doing massive Dinobots. They're really accurate to the cartoon. I'm jumping on board. However, this Grimlock is very hard to find and people have been lamenting that for a while. But as I was saying, they are re-releasing it. They're bringing it out again. So you will be able to pick this up and I'm wondering if they're going to make some paint changes there that will mean I need to upgrade this Grimlock. We never know. I've lamented this. I don't like the chest piece. So I'm wondering if they'll change that. Who knows if anyone else has complained about that. But don't they look awesome? They really look great as a, as a lineup, the uh, Studio Series Dinobots. Loving those guys. Probably the highlight of my collection. Although I like, I, I do like this run of all these characters. This is what I wanted when I was a kid. Um, never had this many when I was a kid. Very fortunate to be able to spend money on them now. But obviously it's something that I've wanted since I was very young. Would I replace these and, and be satisfied with a G1 vintage run? Let's say they were all vintage. They were all those G original G1 molds. Would that do it for me? And I, I feel like no. I like these because they're so much more, there's so much, they just look, those original G1 toys, although I loved them at the time and I would like examples of them, these are more like the characters. These are more like what you saw on screen and there's so much more articulation. You can do more with them. Anyway, I'm waffling crazily if we're supposed to be looking at everything in this room. I'll go down to and I see this is something a lot of people are doing. This is actually the 86, because a lot of those guys are 84 to 86. And then we get to the movie. And the actual ones that appeared in the movie, Perceptor and Blaster are an outlier because obviously they were all over. I think Perceptor was all over season two of the cartoon. I can't remember, but Bla Blaster certainly was. And these guys didn't appear until the movie. And all these guys got their first introduction in the movie. Managed to find Springer. He's very hard to find in the UK at the minute. Really like Springer. RC is one of my favourites. I've got my Gunky Blur. I'm waiting for, if you, I don't know if you can see, he's got factory gunge all over him. Thank you to those people who helped me to identify what is wrong with this freaking blur. And they were like, it's something to do with the factory engineering process because mine's not like that. It's like, okay, fine. So I can pick up, I've tried cleaning him. It's really hard to get off. So I think I'm just going to pick up a version. And Massive Magnus, as time goes on, the, the huge size of Magnus is irking me a little less, but he shouldn't be bigger than Grimlock. Uh, and we got the Junkions. I've got the three that I kind of, that kind of stand out from for me from the movie. This is another one of the uh, background Junkions who, who got named later and appeared later. So, uh, love having those guys there. I'm liking the way it's starting to look, for sure. Oh, I don't wonder, wonder what kind of thumbnail we could do. We'll figure that out later. Okay, so moving more Transformers, more modern Transformers, moving over to the Decepticon shelf, and it is a lot smaller, as you can see. Let's point the light at these guys. Uh, a lot, far fewer Decepticons released in the kinds of lines I'm following at the moment. I could have picked up versions of all the Seekers. That's Studio Series 86, Starscream. I could have picked up Dirge, Ramjet, some of the other guys. Uh, but I, again, I'm holding fast because I think this tendency towards cartoon accuracy is going to continue. That's, I'm hedging my bets on that one. This is really crappy. The autofocus isn't working here. It might actually be better not pointing the spotlight at it. Really like the Legacy Insecticons. Had to pick those guys up. My, some of my favourites that I remember from childhood, the Insecticons. Loved them in the packet, the gold and the purple. I was excited, as excited about getting those guys as the Dinobots. Rumble. And Frenzy, who are really nice releases for Studio Series 86. Such a shame that it seems like the core class is going away because I like picking these guys up. 
10 quid or thereabouts for a little dinky transformer who, you know, got his chance to shine in the package on his own. Picked up Blitzwing, also a video of me unboxing him on the channel if you would like to watch that. I picked him up because I, as I say in that video, I wasn't sure about the jet mode in particular, a lot of kibble and but it's a good figure and when they sit around on shelves for a while you can sometimes pick up these guys for a decent price and obviously the movie Decepticons along with a single Gnaw. I was going to troop build with Gnaw but as I have said space, space is an issue. I would love to have a collecting room. That dream has not come true yet. So yeah we've got, a, we've got three Seekers, uh, well Scourge, that's a Seeker. Those are both Seekers. Yeah, that's that. two Seekers and Scourge. The uh, Target Master version of Cyclonus, which is more, I think it's more toy, it's supposed to be more toy accurate coloring on that guy. And uh, a more movie accurate version. Or so I am told, so I am told. I'm like, like this Galvatron who is at time of recording being re-released in Studio Series 86 with a more bluish colouring uh, that is meant to be more movie accurate. I was not thinking that I necessarily needed that, that the colouring was off. I've seen pictures of Galvatron where he's very purple. So this was fine for me. So I don't know if I'm going to upgrade. Maybe it will be the same as with Blitzwing. You know, that's a leader class figure. It's, it's expensive, but just like Coronation Starscream, a lot of people had that Earthrise Starscream already. So when it comes to this Galvatron, a lot of people are going to have Legacy Galvatron. Are they necessarily going to pick up 86? I think it's going to go on deep discount pretty quick. I think you're going to be able to pick up that £60 Studio Series 86 Galvatron for at least half price within six months. He's going to sit on shelves. That's what I, that's my guess. Okay, so I think that might be my modern Transformers up to this point, but it's not the end of the video because, you know, I wanted to talk about more things like the editing. I really like this setup that I've got at the minute. Works for me well. Got the microphone in place, so all I have to do is swing this, swing this bad boy into position, and I can record at the computer for YouTube videos. For years and years, I held out against getting two monitors. I'm like, well, what, why wide monitor so I can see everything, like panoramic view of all of my internet doings. But I don't need that. I said to myself, but for my, I, I started streaming on my gaming channel and I realized, ah, okay, I need to have the game here and I need to be looking at chat and the back end of things with a second monitor. So at that point I was like, right, I've got to make that switch. I made that switch years ago, but it was, it was like, yeah, you, I think as soon as you start doing a little bit of editing or internet -y style things, uh, that second monitor starts to come in really handy. Particularly for doing things live. Mm. Yeah, I've got this nice little... Oh, it's very dusty, I'm sorry. I can't get it undusted. It's it's just... It's a magnet for dust. That's the, that's the other thing with having these guys up here now. Dust is an absolute nightmare. The cabinets really helped with the dust and I don't have that anymore. Why did we move? Uh... It's a P the the PC. It's not it's not a beast. It's uh, but it does the job. And I got these little cuby things to kind of fill in gaps and turn gaps into potential storage spaces. And I did have some guys up there, but I've kind of collected them together. Oh no, we do have some more modern. These are Origins Wheeljack and Origins. Jazz and I've got Origins Bumblebee who I missed. I held off on these guys for the longest time because I thought I missed the I missed the Bumblebee. I'm not going to get into those. But if you don't know Origins, basically how they appeared in the first 
when they were on Cybertron before they came to Earth in the in the G1 cartoon. Why well, I missed Bumblebee. So I'm not going to pick these guys up because it will just annoy me even more if I've got half of the Origins releases. But they're bringing Bumblebee back. So again, you see, just be patient. Wait. It will come. It will come. So once he arrives, we're going to do an unboxing, I think, of all the Origins. These are the, I think, they've done some Seekers as well. They're like, like those Triangle Seekers from Cybertron. But... I'm going to do a video like that. Let's, let, let's look at the origins of the Transformers. Like I said, with the with the YouTube stuff, I'm constantly thinking what what type of video is going to interest people. And, and when it comes to the unboxings, that's why I'm thinking about what's the point of me unboxing Optimus Prime? Everyone wants Optimus Prime. Everyone's got Optimus Prime. Everyone who has got a YouTube channel about Transformers has, has unboxed that. 86 studio series optimus prime on their channel what's the point of me doing it so i'm thinking well i'll do i'll do an unboxing of all the origins instead because that's something maybe not a lot of people are doing maybe they're not doing it because no one will watch it <laughs> uh, we're not the end of the transformers either Let's have a look at these guys up here. I do, I do like having these high up shelves above the windows. It's a bit like a shop, isn't it? Let me get my stupid footstool. All right, so I picked up the Ecto-1 when they were re-releasing the real Ghostbusters. That's such a hit and miss line. They just put token retro shit out every time there's another crappy modern Ghostbusters movie. But I did pick up Missing Link Prime. I haven't taken Matt. It's taken him out of the box, which is a bit silly, really, because his articulation is the main feature. But, you know, I've got it. Where would I put it, basically? I don't have anything else really to go with it. So at the moment, he's going to stay in his box. Maybe once I, if I get Cliff Jumper and other missing link figures, we'll eventually take them out of the box. I haven't really decided yet. Um... And these, re these very accurate reissues, these are what got me into collecting in the first place. Modern, uh, got yeah, that, that's what I started collecting. This reissue of, you can't really see it very well. There's lots of reflections on it, but it's very, it's a very accurate. And, <clears throat> and behind there is the hot rod that they did a reissue of. I just, when they do reissues, I don't want different packaging. I want exactly the same packaging as it was back in the 80s. If you're going to reissue, reissue those characters for the kind of collector that I am, I just want a reproduction. Because, honestly, even if I had the money to buy vintage versions of these guys for 400, 600 pounds boxed, I'm not sure I would because you never get a mint, you never get a pristine example. Even the best G1 box things from the 80s now are looking a bit dog eared around the edges. They're starting to deteriorate. They almost always have scuffs and things. So the opportunity to have something that is pristine, that looks like it came off the shelf in the 80s and hasn't been sitting in someone's loft for 40 years is appealing to me, even if I had the money to get all the vintage. So, get the Turtle Wagon I got as well. The uh, Playmates are doing that very hard to get the Turtles in the UK. So, all specialists I'm buying from at the moment. And as you can see over here, we've got more of those re reissues that they did. I got Blaster at the time. Oh. And... Who's behind there? Yeah, right, it's just Starscream. And then those Dungeons and Dragons things. That they, Again, they did those cartoon versions of the characters. I really like the cartoon. And Hasbro tends to do this stuff when there's a new movie coming out to push people's nostalgia buttons and get them interested in the new property. For me, it's just like, well, I don't care about that. I, if, if you're doing these characters, that's great. I'll pick those up because... There were never those accurate Dungeons and Dragons cartoon, uh, cartoon accurate characters. And vintage, we do go vintage occasionally. I've got a video ready to go up about pipes, unboxing this pipes, who I got from a from eBay. 
one of my that's my first vintage purchase that's my vintage prowl there's my vintage shelf it may grow in the future it may grow in the future but strap for space strap for cash so at the risk of doing what you're not supposed to do on youtube and being honest that is the end of the transformers bit of this video and if you're just here for transformers i don't want to waste your time we're going to have a look at what else i've got over here because as i say uh, i wasn't just into collecting transformers it was toys that i remembered from and had a fondness from from my childhood when i got into this and a massive part of that is turtles ghostbusters and masters of the universe and some weird little quirky uk centric things which i'll show you now so this line the motu origins line is pretty much coming to an end now they're trying to continue the retro goodness with cartoon filmation versions of all of these origins characters i've got a lot of the origins there are no duplicates in here so each of these pegs some have four on some have three there's mosquito shira the Eternian goddess, I remember her from one of the comics. She's an obscure character, but I haven't gone for every scene. I'm not complete on this. I'm just going for the stuff that I remember. So there are a lot of snake men, later characters that I, I'm not interested in. I did pick up a few of them, like this guy King Hiss I've got back there. Leech and Snout Spout, I wanted those guys. Very hard to pick up in the UK. King Randor, who was a very late addition to the Motu, original Motu line. And he was hard to get hold of. Really remember this guy from childhood for some reason. I picked him up. So I had to get a version of him. But as I say, this helps because although my initial thought was, well, I just want, I just want, carded examples of everything and it'll look like a shop that perusing things on the shelves this actually helps in terms of what i can collect because i would need a lot more shelving and so on to accommodate all these characters uh, well maybe not maybe not if this was just l l rows of shelves i'd be able to put more up there but i want i want them carded i like the way they look Oh, that said, oh, I said it was the end of the Transformers. It's not. I got those reissues of Soundwave's cassettes. In that Motu Origins line, they were doing all the... It's crazy, really. They were doing all the vehicles and everything. The vehicles sit on shelves. Not everyone wants them. I think because they take up so much space in people's collections, I don't. they're not as massive. But some of these characters they brought out, not carded, but... In special releases through the through the crappy Mattel Creations website, which they sell out in seconds, so you end up spending a fortune to try and get hold of them. So I didn't pick up the a lot of the boxed. I did initially. I picked up the the Land Shark and stuff like that, but swiftly realised that's going to take up too much uh, space on my shelf. And then they did something really annoying with some of those Mattel Creations exclusives. So this guy is carded, but the hole is not punched. Ugh. And it's like in this weird sleeve, plastic sleeve, which I, I really look, I don't, I don't want that. I want, I want the carded guy, but there you go. Some nice little variations you never got an Eternian guard I don't think in the past and because they'd released a version of man at arms with a mustache they put in a hat a head there for people who are like well the toy never had a mustache well there you go there's a freaking head I just took got some duplicates to take a couple of these out of the packets well like I say this is all aesthetic sort of it's been it's, the the idea is it's it just evokes emotion um 
it makes it, it's like looking at art it's like having a um, a room that is feng shui or whatever it is whatever is in that room that is making giving your brain little dopamine hits and for me it's these guys so these are all the reissues of the Ghostbusters that Hasbro have been done re doing recently, like I say, to tie in with the new movies, Afterlife and then Frozen Terror or whatever. And it's just nice to get versions of these. Uh, a lot of fond memories associated with picking up this, these OG OG Ghostbusters and then later the line just went crazy expanded all over the place and you started to get these crazy fright features and stuff and they re-released some of those so I picked those up I would like it if they released some more of the ghosts some more of the quirky ghosts but it's very niche and like I say they don't do it unless there's a new media property to tie into uh, and this, uh, as I say, this kind of, this side of my collecting, it hasn't stopped. I'm still picking them, picking stuff up. Uh, like I picked up uh, particularly the turtles at the minute and I'm still keeping an eye out for the Motu because I, I want those characters that I want. But yeah, this is kind of like more of a static collection. Whereas the Transformers are always growing, changing. I'm doing stuff with the Transformers. And that's why that's, I think that's why the focus of the channel has become Transformers because it's more now, it's more active. Whereas this is just, you know, a shelf of memories really. And like I said, Nema Studios, I did some videos on them on the channel. They're still up for you to take a look at, but they're a really nice kind of bespoke, small toy producer and these, they do these really obscure figures from some properties that are only really familiar to UK fans. The Trapdoor was a really high quality claymation uh, cartoon that I still feel holds up. Very quirky. Some of these characters, this was like a very early um, AR, uh, I think you would call it now, um, uh, computer generated sort of TV show where the kids would try and navigate through a computer generated dungeon and stuff from advertising back in the day. This was a terrifying character from my childhood grot bags. She was the nemesis of this crazy, well, there was an, basically there was an emu and a, and, and a, and a crazy guy and she was her, she was their enemy. You can look it up. You can look at <laughs> these and I have my pegboard ready for more of these flipping Playmates turtles. I loved the tur the original Playmates turtles line. I was so excited to pick them up when I was a kid and to have something that looks like a mint example in a, in a display like this, exactly what I want. The only problem is Playmates are incredibly, incredibly inconsistent about what they are releasing. In the UK, I got a I got a duplicate Foot Clan because you've got to have more than one. Rocksteady's back there, so I'm pretty much up to date with what they've released in the UK at the minute. But there's another wave coming that is really hard to find. But it's a bit of a it's a bit of a quest to pick it up. The only one I had to go to eBay for was April. Just like back in the day, she was rare, and she's rare now. Wow, I never saw her on the shelves anyway. Maybe she wasn't rare and she was just like, oh, no one's buying this because I do see her for sale now. If you want a vintage mint Playmates turtle, turtles figure, it's, it tends to be April. So I, th I think she just didn't sell basically. Krang, like Ray Fillet, I never had him as a kid, but yeah, if you're really releasing that, I'll pick it up. So that is kind of kind of my collection so far and this room doubles as a bit of an everything room it's a collecting room it's a work room i work from home now so this computer doubles as um work computer editing youtube computer 
And this is what I've always wanted to have the collection around me. If I had a collecting room, I don't know what I'd do. It just means I could collect more things, but I think I would still have stuff around me. That's the point. I really hope you are enjoying all the videos on the channel. I've been asking people for feedback and trying to figure out, as I say, what kinds of videos people want to watch. But thank you for watching because it does make this side, uh, it's not a side hustle, a side project of collecting more interesting than just like three years ago deciding, ah, I'm going to start collecting. Having the YouTube channel means that I'm having the collection, but I'm also doing something with it, doing something creative with it. And that's always been important to me in life. And I want, I want I, I, yeah, I didn't want to just coll collect in isolation. And through the YouTube, I feel like I'm not. I'm actually getting stuff out there. But I've, I've expanded the scope of things I, I, I'm doing on the channel slowly but surely. And hopefully you're seeing that now. It's not just me talking about the latest thing I've got. Although I do like doing those unboxing videos and review videos and top tens of the toys and stuff. Um, Eventually, you just run out of material. You've got to keep evolving on YouTube. You've got to keep changing. You've got to keep hustling. There's that word again. It keeps it keeps cropping up. But in terms of trying to get videos out to people, trying to make people interested and do stuff people enjoy, it does sometimes feel like a hustle. You're like, what can I do now to get people interested? So, yeah, really thinking about that a lot. And hopefully the quality of the videos is improving. I think it is. And the thing I found the most rewarding so far has been that Transformers retrospective, the 35 minute retrospective of season one that I did. And my ideal, if I could talk about an ideal for the channel at this stage, would be videos like that. But um, it's just a question mark at the moment as to whether that is something that is going to interest people over the long term or it's just a fluke with that one video. But I guess the only way to figure that out is to try. So that's what I'm thinking moving forward. There will be more kind of discussion and review of uh, the cartoon, the comics, the, the wider media rather than just the toys. And I think that's sometimes where I'm coming unstuck on YouTube because this was a very toy focused channel. And through talking to other YouTubers and getting familiar with what other YouTubers are doing and more familiar with the, the kind of retro toy space, I'm getting a better sense of what I can be doing. And it's much broader than I thought it was. So gradually I'm trying to put those kinds of videos in there. As I say, Thank you for watching and I will uh, see you in the next video. I have no idea what that's going to be because this one is just an overall thing uh, just to catch you guys up. Thank you for supporting the channel. I've been Nap yet. Hope you enjoyed the look around the collecting stroke, working stroke, playing room and I'll see you next time. Bye.